Hello and welcome to today's lesson on simplifying and evaluating expressions. Um, it's going to cover topics in standard 1.1D and standard 1.2A in Algebra 1. And if you're working on study island questions, it's going to be under that same topic, simplifying and evaluating expressions. So what does that even mean? Well, it basically means you're substituting and combining like terms. So substituting is when you are replacing a variable or the letter in math with a number and then simplifying. And then combining like terms is when you're matching terms that have the same variable and exponent and combining them to create a smaller expression. And remember, as always, our study tips is you can pause, rewind, fast forward as you need to. And I highly recommend that you keep a math notebook and are writing down because it'll help you remember and to um, perform better. And then also you can, when I start a problem, after you've watched one or two, go ahead and pause it. And then you can work the problem yourself and then watch me do it. And then you can see and you can find your mistakes and you can learn what you're doing wrong that way, if at all. Or you can learn that you're doing it 100% correct. So I'm glad you're here and let's start. Here is our first problem. If A equals 7 and B equals negative 21, what is the value of the expression below? Well, simply, they're just telling you that in this expression, this A right here and here, and then the B right there is going to be replaced with numbers. The A is going to be replaced with the 7, and the B is going to be replaced with the negative 21. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like. So we have 6. And then anytime we substitute, we want to put that in parentheses, especially if there's negative, so that A is being substituted by the 7 plus, and then my B is a negative 21, put it in parentheses, divided by the A number, which is 7, plus 2 times, and I have another a right here that I'm also going to replace with 7. And then I just use order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS, to solve this. So here my parentheses mean multiplication. Um, there's no operations inside of my parentheses to do, so I don't have a p exponents. I don't have any exponents. And then you do multiply, multiplication and division left to right. So I have that. So I, you don't do multiplication and then division. You do it left to right. So you might do division first. You might do it last. doesn't matter. That MD part just means do it right to left. Sometimes that's a confusing. Okay. So I have the 6 times the 7, which is 42 plus, and then I have negative 21 divided by 3. That's going to be negative 3. And since it's negative, I'm going to put it in parentheses so that I can keep my sign straight. Plus 2 times 4, sorry, 2 times 7, which is 14. And then I add and subtract to left to right. If you at this point put 42 minus 3, that's not incorrect. A plus a negative is the same as subtraction. So here, 42 plus negative 3, that's going to be 39. And then 39 plus the 14 is going to be 53, which is your final answer in letter D. In this next problem, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. It, we will be evaluating. So it says evaluate the following expression when n equals negative 11. So anywhere in this expression of 3 times the absolute value of n plus 3, anywhere I see an n, I'm going to re be replacing that with a negative 11. So it's going to look like this. I have 3, and this straight line is an absolute value symbol, but instead of writing n, I'm going to be replacing that n with a negative 11. Plus 3 
and an absolute value symbol at the end. So absolute value, that's a bracket, that's a type of parenthesis. So I'm going to do what's inside that absolute value first. So negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8, so that goes inside my, my absolute value. And then the absolute value of negative 8 is 8, because absolute value means distance from 0. Negative 8 is 8 units from 0. So absolute value just makes your number positive every single time, because distance is positive. So then I have 3 times 8, which is 24. And 24 is answer letter A. This next problem is going to be very similar. It's still an evaluate problem. However, they're using function notation to ask you to evaluate. So here, function notation is just this f of x. It's not 5, sorry, it's not f times x. We read that as f of x. Here are some other examples I wrote out over here. Um, you have y of x, z of x, k of x m of x. And all function notation is, is, is a way to name a function. Because when you get in higher level math, you will work with a whole bunch of these in one problem. So it's really handy to have different names for them. Instead of just being like, oh, that first function, but then your neighbor has a different function written first because they skipped around. It gets very confusing. You can just be like, oh, and when you're looking at the k, func k of x function, or when you're looking at z of x, or when you're looking at m of x. So that's why we go ahead and use function notation, is because we like to be able to give functions names. So this is just a name. It's this, you could scratch this out, and put a y there. It's the same thing, only it would be really confusing if instead of having these names, these were all just y equals, if you were going to work with all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these um, so we don't get confused when we're working out our problem. So here, this doesn't mean f times 5. It's saying find f of 5. Or it's saying that when this function f of x evaluated at 5. So you're not going to really be working with this name part. You're just going to be working at what that function equals. So I'm just, this just means, if you see here in the name there's an x there, and what it's asking you to find it has a 5 there. That just, it replaced that x with a 5. So on the function, the square root of 3,125 x, instead of having x there, I'm going to replace that x with a 5. So I'm just going to take 3,125 times 5, and that's going to be 15,625 and that's still all under the square root. And then I take the square root of that number and I get 125. So that just means f of 5 equals 125. And f of 5 just means when you evaluate the function called f of x for 5, this is your answer, letter A. This next problem is an example of how to work with square roots. And I'm going to show you how to do this one, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you different square root problems because if you get this calculator, it's a scientific calculator, TI30XX, and lots of times it says multi-view after that, um, you can type this straight in and it gives you the answer. So that's really handy to have on the EOI so you can check yourself. Or if you have a, you forget because you're nervous what to do, it's just really nice to have that calculator. So I really recommend you either using your learning fund or finding one. They're pretty cheap at Amazon and Walmart um, to find, to get this calculator. So that's just why I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it.
Um, so here we're going to do 27 times the square root of 16 divided by 9 square roots of 2. Okay, so when you, first of all, I'm going to simplify any square roots I can. The square root of 16 is 4. So I'm going to take the square root of 16, which is 4, and everything else is going to stay the same. Then in the numerator, the top, I'm going to take 27 times 4, which is 108. And now you have, it, there's no more arithmetic per se that I can do. However, we're not allowed to have any square roots in the denominator. It's not considered completely simplified until there's no square roots in the denominator. So I'm going to have to rationalize that square root. Rationalize the square root means that I multiply the top and the bottom by the square root that's in the denominator. So here, the square root in the denominator is the square root of 2. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2. So at the top, when you're multiplying square roots, you can't multiply, you can only multiply in, outside numbers and inside numbers together. So numbers outside the square root times numbers outside the square root and numbers inside the square root times inside the square root, which can't happen here. So it just stays 108 times the square root of 2. In the bottom, I just have the 9 outside. So it's going to be 9 on the outside. And then square root, I have a 2 and a 2 underneath. So 2 times 2 is 4. But I can actually take the square root of 4, and that's going to be 2. So it's actually just times 2, and you can see that got rid of the square root underneath. 9 times 2 is 18, so this is going to be 18 in the denominator now, and my numerator stays the same. And same thing when you're working with a fraction bar, it's like, that's a fraction bar It means division, so the same rules apply for multiplication and division when you're working with square roots. You can simplify numbers outside the square roots together, which is 108 and 18 here, and then inside, but you only have the two, so there's nothing to simplify. 108 divided by 18 is 6. So this is going to be 6 square roots of 2, which is answer letter B. In this problem, we're just simplifying. We're not evaluating. So simplifying just means that we're going to combine as many like terms as we can, remove as many parentheses as we can. We want this to look as small and nice and neat as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do here is remove parentheses. And I'm going to do that by distributing this 5 out front, which means I take 5 times each term in the parentheses. So I'm going to take 5 times the 6y, which is 30y. And then I'm going to take 5 times the 4z, which is 20z. So I keep the plus 20z. And then I have the minus 20z. And now I'm going to look to see if there's any com like terms I can combine. Remember, for it to be a like term, it has to have the exact same variable, and the exponents on those variables have to be the same. So in my first term, I have a y. Second term, I have a z. and my last term, I have a z. So that means my first and last term here are the same, because they've got like z, z, it matches. 20z minus 20z is 0z, or just 0. Those cancel out. So then I'm just left with that 30y which is my answer, letter B. Can't get any smaller, it's perfect. Thanks for joining us today.